The Spars and Stripes show is brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. Well, it's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World. Today we embark on a remarkable journey as we explore an important topic that resonates with the very essence of progress and harmony. Can you guess what that is? That is women. 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 Peace. And security. and security. In a world often marked by conflict and strife, we, you know, strive to or rather pursue the, we are all in the pursuit of lasting peace. And yeah. in this pursuit, we must acknowledge the instrumental role that women play. Uh, can you imagine being in, at war and the role that women play cannot be overstated? Uh, For far too long, their contributions have been overshadowed and undervalued. However, the women, peace and security agenda seeks to change this narrative, recognizing the indispensable value of women's involvement in mm-hmm. peace building, conflict resolution and of course security efforts and of course in the building for the Meet America policy discussion we are speaking to Senior Master Sergeant Marina Gonzalez or rather Princess Marina. (laughs) Welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being part and parcel of the show and of course thank you for your invaluable service in what you do. Let's get an understanding. What's your mandate and your portfolio at the U.S. Embassy just so that we understand your voice in context? Sure. So I'm active duty Air Force. Um, I'm here on a military assignment. Okay. And so within the embassy uh, we're tasked with working with the local military. So for here, it's um, BDF on all kinds of things. Okay. Um, but really, we're the liaison between the U.S. and the Botswana military. So when you say Air Force, can you fly a plane? I cannot, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> now I wanted maybe one of these days would be flying together. But moving swiftly along, by definition, women, peace and security is a policy framework that recognizes that women must be critical actors in all efforts to achieve sustainable international peace and security. Obviously, WPS promotes a perspective that women's equal and meaningful participation in peace processes, peace building and security. Let's talk how much does this you know resonate with what you're doing here today especially between the bilateral partnership between the bw government and the u.s government sure so i think um this starts with uh, wps and when it was founded which was in 2000 okay that was also the same year that i entered the military Mm -hmm. wow yeah so wow. <laughs> shortly thereafter you know i started to learn about what the wps was and the goals they had and it made sense to me I've always paid attention to the peacekeeping roles the women in my life have played. You know, my mom was constantly stopping arguments between me and my siblings. My grandmother (laughs) was infamous for calling family meetings and putting an end to family drama. Nice. So I can see how women are critical actors in the peacekeeping process. Absolutely. Because it's a role that many of us have seen or been a part of, you know, as we were growing up. So for me, women being vital to peacekeeping operations on the world stage Mm -hmm. is a natural progression. Absolutely, absolutely. It's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World. And if you've just joined us, the theme of today's show is women, peace and security. And speaking from the context of security measures, the role that our beloved mothers, our aunts, our sisters are playing in terms of keeping peace. And I can imagine, you know, displacement of children, you know, in, you know, conflict situations. You might take that for granted, but it's something that, you know, perhaps men don't even think about. Yeah, Marina, um, just looking at your portfolio and the office that you sit in and just your experience, you did say uh, that the WPS was actually founded in the year 2000 when you joined um, the military, if I'm not mistaken. Let's talk about challenges. Um, What challenges have you had to uh, personally face Mm. um, and what challenges uh, do women face in the type of work that you do? Thank you. Yeah, so for me, the biggest challenge I've learned to overcome is the feeling that I'm constantly fighting against a gender stereotype. Uh, Yes, I can imagine. That a woman's place is perhaps a seat at the kitchen table, not the business table. Mm -hmm. Throughout my 23-year military career, there have been many times I've been the only woman in the room giving a different perspective. Mm. Being in a male-dominated career field, Mm -hmm. there have been many times I don't feel heard. But I know that just by me being there, making sure that a woman's voice is heard, I'm helping pave the way, even if it's just a little bit, for another woman that wants to make the military her career. Wow. 
That's such an important, and you cannot underestimate that kind of situation. I've never been on that side of the table where, you know, you're in a room, nobody, sometimes, you know, with women, we often do not perceive them as our equals, you know, and that is an important conversation to have. Let's talk about uh, currently on the show, let's say there's a young girl, there's a woman listening to you and they're trying to understand how do I, you know, sort of talk to power? How do I navigate through my career? How do I navigate through the challenges associated to women? I mean, in Botswana, whether we like it or not we have a gender-based violence pandemic you know what i'm saying across the world globally women are abused across the world globally women are spoken to in an inappropriate fashion what would you say to the young girl or speak to the young girl in yourself and what would you say to them in terms of what you've achieved i mean 23 years that is definitely two decades of nothing but success talk to me yes sir so The advice I have is more along the lines of encouragement. Yep. So I know that finding the balance between a career and a family Mm -hmm. is a constant struggle, Mm -hmm. but it's not impossible. I'm married. I have two grown children. (laughs) (laughs) It was challenging to work a long day and Mm -hmm. then go home and make dinner, help the kids with their homework, those kinds of things. So when a coworker or family member Mm -hmm. is asking you, you know, why are you not home with the kids or Hey, is is taking this promotion going to take you away from your family? Mm. I would say challenge their mindset. Ask them if they would ask men those same questions. Mm. And then most importantly, don't be afraid of going against social standards in pursuit of your own dreams. Hey, click, click, mm, Samantha, mm. I don't hear the... What, no, you're supposed to play the horns. Okay, the okay, horns? okay, you I got you. I, I got your back. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> We've got to always play the horns. Because whether we like it or not, women play such an important yeah. role. I mean, Samantha taught me one thing that, you know, in the parking bay, you know, you can underestimate the size of a parking bay. And when a pregnant woman when gets into a, a, a parking bay, mm. she needs enough space to actually open the door, come out of the vehicle and those things are things that we don't see you know so that is why this conversation is important and I'm extending an invitation to all males to say let's get involved in these conversations let us try and see the perspective of women and the role that they play in peacemaking whether we like it or not Botswana is a very very peaceful place and we'll also be speaking to some women from the voice of the Botswana to say okay what role do women play in everyday peace Right. Mm, mm. Let's move along swiftly. And of course, uh, the U.S. military, though at the forefront of this, st- still can is, is still candid about the work that needs to be done to promote more women in the military, more women in law enforcement, more women in politics. What more do you think can be done in in with regards to this? Sure. So as you mentioned, the U.S. military is at the forefront of a lot of this, um, but there are improvements even we have to make Uh Mm -hmm. women currently make up only 17 percent of uh, the active duty population so we too are unequally represented i think since the u.s military first implemented gender integration we have made strides to make it better for women in the military Mm -hmm. a little bit at a time Mm -hmm. absolutely there was a time when women were not allowed to wear pants or allowed to be pilots Mm -hmm. or have combat related jobs Mm -hmm. but now they can yep So there's still a lot to do, but I think progress starts by sharing our stories in hopes of inspiring others. So I'll share mine with you really quick. Uh, Before I joined the military, I came from a low income family, from a low income neighborhood. I knew that I needed to do something different and I saw the military as an opportunity to get away from that cycle. At the time I was a single mom and I wanted to show my son that there was a a different life where you didn't have to struggle so much. Mm In the beginning of my military career, I was happy that I could provide a roof over our heads and food on our table. But as time went on, I had um, education opportunities and was able to obtain my bachelor's degree. Mm. Eventually, I got married, had my daughter. I felt confident that I was providing a good example of what balancing a career and being a wife and mom could be Mm -hmm. for my daughter. Mm -hmm. As I progressed through the ranks, I realized that both men and women um, looked for me for mentorship. But for the women specifically, I understood that their gender specific challenges more than a male supervisor Mm. could. 
And that inspired me to be a leader amongst my community. Well, it's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World. And, uh, you know, I think also one thing, Samantha, we may underestimate in the role of being in the military as a woman is, you know, the fact that men can objectify you. You know, they can mm-hmm. speak down on you. They can, you know, unfortunately, my species, I'm not so proud of us all the time. But, you know, it, it goes to show the powerful woman that you are. So shout out to you. Thank you for doing such a great job for not only inspiring us as Botswana, you know, uh, uh, the U.S. government, people from the United States, especially in terms of 23 years of a, a balancing act. You know, being a mom, being a wife, you know, and also pursuing your career within the military. I think that is absolutely fantastic. Is there any last words you'd like to add to the conversation before we love and leave you? Just that I feel really lucky to be here in Botswana. Uh And I feel that the universe brought me here to help with these WPS initiatives. Fantastic. You know, I think, Samantha, you should do like an obstacle course there. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Why? Oh, <laughs> yes. You know, we can put it on the Stars and Stripes radio show. 23 and say, years in the military. Like, yeah, honestly, Yeah, come swift. on, go, girl. You can do it. I, I got faith in you. Moving swiftly along. Look, uh, Princess Marina, I've got a dedication. I've got a song for you, okay? Okay. This one is by Shaggy. It's called Strength of a Woman, okay? Oh, nice. It's dedicated to you, okay? Thank, Thank you so you. much for being part and parcel of the show. On the other side of this, we're going to continue conversation mm. and hear from the voice of the Motswana woman. Look out for that conversation coming your way shortly. Good afternoon. <laughs> It's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World. Classic music by Shaggy saying the strength of a woman. And of course, that is what it's about. Today, the show theme is women, peace and security. And of course, highlighting the role women play in our everyday society. And the fact that Botswana is a peaceful country means that there was a woman involved. 1226 is your time across the nation. On the other side of this, we're going to continue conversation. Do not change that FM dial. And if you'd like to be a part of the Stars and Stripes radio show, please feel free to follow the U.S. Embassy on all social media platforms. Please like, share, and of course, interact. Good afternoon. The Stars and Stripes show is brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. It's Gabs of Empower to Engage Your World. Welcome to the Stars and Stripes radio show uh, in proud collaboration with the U.S. Embassy in Botswana and Gabs FM. Look, today's show is exciting. We're talking about women, peace and security. And, you know, Swift, across history, Mm -hmm. uh, women have played such an instrumental role when it comes to being agents of change, when it comes to progress, when it comes to being catalysts and architects of peace. And, you know, today's conversation Conversation is absolutely pivotal because um, on the line and in studio, yes. we're talking to to two amazing Botswana women who, in their own right and in their office, or should I say rank? Uh-huh. I think <laughs> they, you should say they rank. play such a pivotal role mm-hmm. in studio this afternoon. We're talking to Doctor. Uh, Janice Mokhadi, who is the Deputy Director, Chemical, Biological, Nuclear and Radiological Whoa. Weapon Management Authority at the Ministry of Defense and Security. Hold, hold that. I gotta you do, need I to gotta play. play. The horn. <laughs> ah, that's a big title. Say that again. That is Deputy Director, Chemical, Biological, Nuclear mm-hmm. and Radiological Weapon Management Authority at the Ministry of Defense. And security. And security. Wow. Mama, tona, 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 tona. Welcome to the show, Dr. Dr. Janice. Thank you, Samantha. And on the line, we are joined by May Helen Chirisa, who is the Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Entrepreneurship. Welcome to the show, Ma Chilisa. Thank you very much, Samantha and all the listeners. I'm Gali Dumedisa. Thank okay. you so Glad much. To be here with you. Thank you so much for joining us. We know you're so busy, but the fact that you know we are talking on the phone, it it means a great deal to us, and especially being able to bring in the Motswana woman's voice in this conversation. No, the pleasure is all mine. Let's start with you, uh, Doctor Mo. Hadi. Um, first and foremost, it's such an honor to have you here with us on the show. Um, for those who might not know, let's just talk about your role. What is it that you do uh, at the Ministry of Defense and Security? What What's in your portfolio? Because we said a mouthful, but uh, we, we don't quite know what that means. What do you do? 
Um, our, the Chemical, Biological, Radiological, Nuclear Weapons Management Authority, I will call it CBRN for short, so that mm-hmm. I save you the struggle. <laughs> Please, thank you. And I come in peace. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like those I like disclaimer. That. <laughs> yes. My role is to ensure peaceful use of CBRN materials, that, use, uh, that means of delivery, as mm-hmm. well as peaceful use of what we call dual-use equipment uh, mm-hmm. and technology. This means that uh, we have some, uh, this, this CBRN materials, they can either be used uh, for peaceful purposes, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and they can also be weaponized. Uh-huh. So we are ensuring that we don't go the, uh, the, weaponized the weaponizing s- route and they don't fall in the, in the wrong hands. Oh my yes. goodness, what a portfolio. Yes, peaceful <laughs> development. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Now, uh, a bit earlier on, Marina was able to share uh, some of the challenges that women face, um, especially in her line of work, not just challenges, but the successes um, as well as the goals within uh, the military space. I'm interested to find out in your office and the work that you, you've been doing, what challenges have you come across and um, how did you overcome them? Well, I can't claim that uh, my challenges are any peculiar from mm. any other woman, but I can just pick one particular one that I encountered when I was still building my um, career, even at undergraduate level, okay. when I was doing my first degree. Okay. So my, my PhD was in chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a chemistry mentor who actually told me to my face and in class that whatever I do, I can never, ever pass chemistry. So uh, you can imagine wow. at the tender how, age. Yeah, and how I, and make you feel? I was not passing it, especially the model. I was actually... Okay, I hadn't, been, I hadn't been passing that uh, particular module mm. for, which he taught. And I didn't understand, but until he told me. But then I, I avoided the module wherever I could. Mm-hmm. But I decided uh, that, you know what, I am going to do chemistry. I'm going to study it and study it really hard mm. to the highest possible level. Mm-hmm. And so I did. I was actually maybe just proving a point mm. and I managed to prove it. So oh, overall, instead of uh, crying about uh, challenges that I yeah. have, I decided to, ch- to turn them into an opportunity, which I still do uh, up to date. I actually uh, empower myself through knowledge. Mm. I look for gaps and turn them into opportunities. I like that. I network uh, uh, with uh, relevant people. Mm-hmm. I surround myself with supportive uh, network. I like that. Yeah. So... I love how you turn uh, lemons into lemonade. There's a saying where you you take something that's bitter and you make something beautiful about uh, uh, out of it. So thank you so much for sharing that story as well. And I think uh, let's just bring Mehel and Chilisa into this conversation. Um, let's briefly talk about your role. You play such an important role, especially at the Ministry of Entrepreneurship. Um, you're the Deputy Permanent Secretary. Uh, for people who have no idea what it is that you do, what's within your portfolio, Me- Me- uh, Chilisa? Okay, thank you very much, Samantha, and Swift in the background, thank you. Yo, thank, um, you're welcome. Um, I believe I've been a guest before to mm. um, Gab's FM, but yes. again, I can always share my story and what it is that I'm doing at the moment. Um, I have been um, given the responsibility to deputize my peers, Rajo Ramapoi, and we basically are the coordinators of entrepreneurial efforts in the country. Mm. So, you know, yes, there has been a lot of enterprises, activity has always been there, SMS, SMMEs, you know, large corporates and so forth, including the startups. But as a ministry that was incepted um, post-COVID, and we needed to have it more structured, more formalized, as opposed to having pockets of activity there. So this is what I do. And, um, you know, primarily I've got the startups and I can say that it's been a great year. And in that great year, I've got to interact with a lot of innovators. Mm-hmm. Mubozwana, where, you know, we tend to think, oh, can this really happen? Mohai? But in mm-hmm. fact, it does happen. Mubozwana. There's been great innovators even with bringing out um products, you know, that I can actually compete at a global scale. So my message is out there, you know, just to encourage the entrepreneurial spirit to drive it. And I'm also tasked with doing um, the whole mindset change. Mm. And yes, at the national level, yesterday, um, the office of um, the chief of staff, you know, they did the launch here. His Excellency went to launch it. Also, mindset change is also what I'm also um, charged with and just man- looking after the startups of the country. So, you know, we've got a great policy there. And as long as that our mindsets are not adjusted or aligned to what um, the, the mandate is, 
we can only go so far. Absolutely. Let's talk about what it achieve, what it takes to achieve your portfolio and your title. I mean, there are definitely challenges, especially the fact that number one, you're a Botswana woman. You know, at times, you know, we do not take uh, Botswana women seriously. At times, you know, when you sit at a table, especially at a table of power, you know, you can be undermined slightly. And let's talk about those kind of challenges and what it takes for the young girl to achieve what you've achieved. I mean, from your vantage point, you're sitting as the Deputy uh, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Entrepreneurship, which is a huge portfolio. Talk to us. Okay. Um, in terms of challenges, um, I really wouldn't be able to pinpoint one out, but I've, I've got examples. I mean, mm-hmm. um, it's this one we're trying to meet somebody, you know, um, with his attitude who probably might be a male chauvinist, a narcissist, but it does not represent the country, nor would it, I feel, it represents the organization. Mm-hmm. But to narrow it down to your question, Swift, um, challenges have always been the cultural side of it, you know, the cultural dynamics. Yes, yes. Um, I must say I've had a colorful career. I mean, whether I was in the private sector, in the public sector, and I, my country has really given me a great opportunity. And I found myself sometimes in a circle with elderly men. Mm-hmm. And, you know, before I got my title, I must remember that I was one a child in me that I'm with elders. Mm-hmm. Um, a mm-hmm. simple thing that at tea time, it was me for me. Not that they expected, but... Um, well, in a cultural set, I mean, just finding that balance. Yeah. There was no way that I could go make tea for myself because it's tea break. I would go and extend an invitation to the gentleman, you know, like I'll do at home. So it's just that balance where, um, you know, you'd be sitting there and an elder comes in and that is my rightful chair. How do I manage this? Do I stand up or do I say to him, no, go sit at the back there? As mm. opposed to, you know, this is my seat at the table. I've earned it. I've worked hard for it. So I still struggle a lot, you know, once in a while, you know, with the, with the cultural dynamic to it. Wow. It's Gabs of Empower to Engage Your World. Uh, we continue uh, with the conversation on women, peace and security. And of course, we are talking to Dr. Janice Mokhadi, who is the Deputy Director, Chemical, Biological, Nuclear and Radiological Weapon Management Authority at the Ministry of Defense and Security. Um, she's here in studio. And on the line, if you've just tuned in, we're talking to May uh, Helen Chilisa, who is the Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Entrepreneurship. We're celebrating women today we are finding out what they do in their different portfolios uh, the challenges that they face and the celebrations of their journey now let's bring you back into this conversation dr mokhadi um when we talk about botswana and the role uh, that we play as citizens um what do we need to be doing more of to encourage to inspire to promote more women in different fields, whether it's in tech, whether it's in politics, whether it's in military or in science, because that technically is the field that you're in, but under security. I have both. Double you have trouble. both, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm, I'm glad Helen brought the mindset change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, um, you know, women in the past were supposed to be doing certain jobs and mm. not others. So we need to challenge these cultural and social norms and uh, stereotypes through community engagement and awareness. Well, uh, something has been done, but we need to do more. Mm. Yeah. Um, the other thing we need to do is um, the whole of government and the whole of society. We should uh, part- form, develop partnerships um, and strategies that engage uh, the advancements of support for women in peace and security through the whole of government mm-hmm. and the whole of society. Mm. So we need both players on the, bo- or on the board. Um, the other thing uh, that I can think of is um, uh, apply gender lens. You know, gender-sensitive policies yeah. that uh, includes, include women. Like we need to be to consider specific needs and roles that women have, maybe in during conflicts or post-conflict uh, situation. Mm. So we need to bring them on board mm. Uh, mm. on these issues. So there are many that I can I can come out, out with, like educational opportunities. We need to educate them. We need to train them for leadership positions. Of course, mm. you can give a, a woman a role. Uh, to lead, but also you should give them training that yeah. comes with it. So, thank you. 
Well, it's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World. If you've just joined us, welcome to the Stars and Stripes Radio Show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Embassy in partnership with Gabs FM, hashtag America in Botswana. Let me bring in the Deputy Permanent Secretary back into the conversation as we part ways with her. Uh, Look, uh, let me ask you this question. A snapshot of entrepreneurship in Botswana. Are we seeing women in the entrepreneurship space in Botswana? And how are we doing as a country in terms of embracing women entrepreneurship because if I'm not mistaken, Africa has the most entrepreneurs, women, women entre- yeah. entrepreneurs in the world. Okay. Um, I won't shy away from the fact that, you know, as um, Jane does say, alluded, it's been a man's world. Mm. But, you know, when you single out the country, Botswana, I've had the opportunity, you know, to travel to quite a lot of Africa and where people come and find Botswana, there is quite a lot of women representation in in positions yes. we have done well and we need to really really you know applaud our leadership for that but however no there are those gaps i mean for instance when something very sensitive like the gender it's something that i find that a lot of women tend to shy away from um if i'm going to go on stage or on um, take a podium i want to talk about uh, something that is gender sensitive mm-hmm. what does that mean for me as women and mm-hmm. also doubt it falls back to culture but as a woman, what are you trying to fight for? Is it that like, proper understanding? I mean, I know there's some issues where we're quite gender sen- sensitive that I've tried to raise. And, you know, you'd have a family member, you know, being in a family setting, they'll give you that look. But, you know, it is also to encourage more of the Muslim woman that it is allowed, it is okay. You can be everything you want to be in this world. And, you know, we should not be limited by, um, you know, the stereotypes that are out there. Back to, you know, the, the whole on entrepreneurship, I've had a great women, young girls, you know, this is um, a new generation who are a little bit more bolder than my generation, mm. my mother's generation, where who said, who, who said, um, um, I just recently met a girl who is now doing the maintenance of military aircraft. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. big. And I said to her, girlfriend, you know, we have something in common. And what is that? I mean, I went and studied in my NB in aerospace. So, you know, that field where predominantly people look at you and well, this is all men. But mm. now she's into the mechanics, the whole maintenance of it. But, you know, you're also bold enough to go into, go into uncharted waters where um, now they went girls who are now doing into collecting of the scraps, you know, the metal scraps, mm-hmm. where they're now selling it in Gubo Malawi. Mm. And tradition to men that you'd see the men doing that. But, you know, it's always encouraging that, you know, women have gone beyond borders. And where I'd also love to see more women participating, you know, as entrepreneurs, as web developers. Because remember, I you know the IT space was also predominantly filled by men. And... um this is an area whereby you'd also be encouraging young girls, you know, now let's get into artificial intelligence. Mm. Let's get into robotics. You know, who said that the men are the ones who are behind, you know, creating robots and getting into the AI, the world of AI. Mm. And yes, you know, it, it's been quite interesting that when I, from where I sit, where I see the whole diversity of young girls who are now tapping on the footsteps, you know, that walk, the, 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 the way that we've paid for them, that no, come on, come on, girls, let's take it to the next level. It's no more about because it's privilege, because you're a woman. It's what is your birthright it's something that you need to fight for you know to, to assert yourself and say you know if a man can do this why can i not do this i mean i was also quite wild you know to my sister here J- dr jane you know the area that she's in because predominantly you just hear the title blah, 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 okay it's for <laughs> men and then there's a woman behind that like wow mm-hmm. that is what um you know being the girl is and i'm um, fighting for your peace you know fighting for your security fighting for your relevance that um you know it can be done and um, we will not be intimidated by men and, you know, the, all the stereotypes or at times of career, when we chose our careers, you know, women traditionally were more marginalized or pushed to one side. You no, know, she would broke the glass ceiling. Why can I not get into the field of chemistry, the field of biochemistry and so forth? Well, it's Gabs FM Power to engage your world. Let me afford you this opportunity to share your parting statement as we let you go. We know you've got a very, very busy day. Um, my personal statement before I know cough is like the time has come women we, we're not going to be victims anymore mm-hmm. we're going to go out there and get what is right you know we've worked hard and we've ticked it you know, as long as you've ticked the check box the tick box you know you've got the relevant education the relevant exposure the relevant work ethic why not you know you can get it and whether are you an entrepreneur or you want to go back to you know mainstream corporate world Absolutely. It's Gabs FM Power to engage you. Well, thank you so much. And of course, you just heard the voice of Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Entrepreneurship, uh, Honorable Helen Chilisa. Have a fantastic day. Thank you very much.
All Good right. Listen to all the listeners. Thank you. Good afternoon. Let's continue conversation in studio. And of course, we're going to move along swiftly. On the other side of this, we also got Education USA mm-hmm. coming your way. If you've just joined us, welcome to the show. You're officially on the Stars and Stripes radio show. And I've got another banger for you. You know Let's that. hear it. Let's you hear know it. This. Remember this one. Oh. You know this one. Oh. Come on, go. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Take it to church. <laughs> I used to feel to you, you make me feel. It's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World. And let me tell you something the mood in the studio is second to none. It's a real Friday on the Midday Fix Reloaded. And of course, on the Stars and Stripes radio show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Embassy in partnership with Gabs FM. And today we're celebrating the power. Of, of a woman. woman. Look, Swift, uh, Ma- Ma Helen Chilisa said something quite interesting uh-huh. about how often there's women in the background of breakthrough um, inventions, etc. And I remember this morning I was actually reading an article of okay. the GPS. And uh-huh. there's a certain woman, Gladys West, who is the hidden figure behind that invention. If you eh. didn't know, now you the know. The GPS. The GPS okay. that we use when nice. we're traveling or trying to find our way. A woman is is behind that breakthrough invention. So shout out to the women. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. And I like the way, you know, one thing that we've got to do, we need to uh, stop with the gender divide. Mm. You know, we need to now come and unite and understand that together we are stronger people. We are stronger nation as the Republic of Botswana. We're stronger government as the U.S. government or the BW government. Because when we collaborate and work together and, uh, and not feel threatened mm-hmm. by each other, and I'm also speaking on on behalf of men, you know, there's no reason for us to feel threatened by a powerful woman. Mm. You know, all she's there is, the, is she's not there to subtract. She's there to add Adding. value and compliment. Multiplier effect. That's what it's called. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now let's bring you back into the conversation, Dr. Uh, Mokhadi. You know, we're speaking on women. We're speaking on peace. We're speaking on security and the office and portfolio that you yourself hold. Uh, for a young Mozana girl who's listening and thinking, oh my goodness, you know, I love the fact that this woman is studying chemistry, that, you know, she stood up to, to this professor who told her that she could not do it because mm-hmm. that's basically what happened. You were told to your face that you cannot. And you know, you, you went against that and you said, you know what, let me prove this man wrong. Um, let's talk to the young Madonna girl who wants to hopefully um, be able to be in your seat or maybe even go beyond what you have done. Mm-hmm. Young girl, you got it. Um, mm-hmm. Be persistent, mm-hmm. be intentional, and most imp- importantly, be resilient. The path can be challenging, but your perseverance and resilience is crucial. Stay committed in in pursuit of your passion. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with a supportive network and draw from the strength of other women who have difference who had made uh, differences in this field. We are waiting for you. You know, there was a great quote that says, in order to see how far you've come, you've got to look behind mm. you. Can I ask you a question? Where did you go to school? Where where did you start this journey? Primary school, secondary school? For you to be where you are, I think sometimes we need to appreciate where you're from. Well, um, I, I, I am from Tamaha. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's in the school local Tamaha? Yes. Wow. Then, uh, my primary up to junior secondary mm-hmm. at Tamaha. Then I went to Mushupa Secondary School. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, those days that we were streamlined, like these are uh, science related. Yes. Yeah. So that I was pushed towards the sciences. You were pushed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like at that level. Then autom- automatically I went into a Bachelor of Science mm. at the University of Botswana. So I'll say that. Is, but I made a for me I made a breakthrough. Um, one thing I didn't share was that I was once a police officer. Oh, and, oh. And cling, cling, cling. I am forever grateful for the choice I made for for joining the police. Okay. The, the, I, I am who I am because of the police. I joined the police. I, okay, I had understood. <laughs> okay, I joined the police, and, and then because when I was doing my undergrad, I was. I, I used to watch CSI. Oh. Okay, I like that. And I loved, I liked it. So I wanted to do forensic science. Mm. And I was told that, no, you can only get it at Botswana Police. So I went to Botswana Police to make inquiries. They told me, no, for you to do this, then you have you to be to a police. Yeah. Mm. And then I talked to my friends. Um, I want to join the police. 
And they was like, what are you Jesse? And I'm like, you know what? I am going to Banta that Jesse, mm. whatever, whatever it means, I'll do. So that is where it started. Then I, I got into the forensic field and the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's Gabs FM Power to engage your world. Thank you to Dr. Johannes Mokadi, who is the Deputy Director, Chemical, Biological, Nuclear and Radiological Weapon Management Authority at the Ministry of uh, Defense and Security. Thank you so much for the role that you've played to the young Motswana girl, whether you're from Tamaha or Marapong. The, at the end of the day, it goes to show to one of two things. The BW uh, government education system can get you where you want to be, whether you're a male or a woman, and of course you can achieve it. And that's how we're going to continue conversation. On the other side of this, we're going to cross over to Education USA, and of course welcome to the Stars and Stripes Radio Show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Embassy in partnership with Gabs FM. Hashtag tell a woman next to you that she's great. The Stars and Stripes Show is brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. Well, it's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World. And of course, welcome back to the show. You're on the Stars and Stripes Radio Show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. And of course, if you like to understand, you know, tune in to more of these uh, shows in line with understanding the role that women play in our everyday society, in our security organs of this country. And of course, in line with peacemaking, that is an amazing show. I really thoroughly enjoyed the show. When women are empowered, peace becomes possible and societies flourish. Flourish. Fact. Definitely, definitely. Now listen to this one. When women are the architects of peace, building foundations of harmony and understanding. Fact. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, should I give you one more? Give me one more nugget. Inclusive peace requires the strength, wisdom, and resilience of women. Ladies drop, and drop gentlemen, that's how we got to, and we're fast <laughs> approaching. Now, listen up. This is a notice of funding opportunity on behalf of Education USA. Now, if you are a young change maker, if you're part and parcel of a local VDC, if you're part and parcel of a non-profit organization, please, and I say this sincerely, go to www.bw.usembassy.gov. Always make sure you're on that website, including following the US Embassy yeah. on all social media pages, because they have so many funding opportunities in line with different uh, sectors of the civil society. The U.S. Embassy Habroni of the U.S. Department of State announces an open competition for registered organizations to submit proposals to implement community initiated development projects through the Ambassador's Special Self-Help Fund Small Grants Program. Okay, The Ambassador's Special Self-Help Fund Program is a grassroots assistance program that provides provides small-scale assistance to communities throughout Botswana as part of an ongoing commitment by the U.S. government to support the development activities at the local level. The ASSHF program is intended to be flexible and allow the ambassador to respond directly to requests from local communities Mm -hmm. for assistance with products that have immediate impact and further mission priorities. Equally important, the ambassador's uh, self-help a fund program is structured to encourage communities to be self-reliant and undertake similar activities on their own in the future. Now, let me tell you something. The maximum grant award for this particular uh, uh, grant is $20,000 and deadline is the 4th of August, 2023. Please, for more information, visit www.bw.us embassy.gov. Please do the right thing. If you're a change maker and you'd like to do part and parcel of changing your community, please do it. I'm going to do it. You know, one thing, let me just say this, because usually uh, Wabile Tau is the one who speaks on this segment. Yeah. And one thing that she she reiterates all the time is, okay, if you sent in your application and it hasn't been accepted, it does not mean that it stops there. There's always so many opportunities. Um, so keep uh, clicking on the website, find out more opportunities mm-hmm. that are there. Keep sending in uh, your proposals, but this time, please fine tune them and see. Hopefully, uh, they will be in line with, with the mandate that is on the specific uh, grants that are coming out. Also, remember, you can call 395-3982 to be able to get more um, information on the grants that are available. All right. In closing, since I've been dropping some great quotes, I got another one from (laughs) Ask AI. Forgive me for it. But anyway, behind every peaceful society, there is a trailblazing woman who did 
to make a difference. Now, I've got to give you another classic one. Remember this one? This is Queen Latifah. She says U-N-I-T-Y. And that is the Stars and Stripes radio show. Proudly brought to you by the U.S. Embassy in partnership with Gabs FM. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Stars and Stripes show was brought to you by the U.S. Embassy.